Wanted well, to talk today a little bit about the structure of the plays. We've talked already about formations, and we've talked about uh, strong side versus quick side, and how in my system, plays have a strong side or quick side built into it so we don't have any left or right. So you will not find me running power right or power left. You'll hear power, which goes to the strength every time now. I've had some people ask me through email, and I appreciate all the emails. You guys have been great. I've tried to keep up with all of them uh, with specific questions as much as I can. Uh, just keep in mind, we just finished our basketball season here in Indiana. Uh, our state tournament, you know, we got knocked out in the first round of sectionals. But I, I also have a, a counting practice. So really busy, but trying to get these videos out to you. Uh, I love doing them. It's a lot of fun. I love corresponding with you guys around the country. So we'll talk a little bit. One of the questions, though, was can you run power to the left or power to the weak side? And uh, what I would tell you is that, no, I run power to the strong side. I run counter to the weak side. Similar in that we get a kick out and a guy in the hole, uh, just different personnel. So um, I'm going to go over today just the play structure. We're not getting into specifics about how to block plays, but I'm going to draw them up on the board and show you basic structures for some of you that aren't sure you know, of the wing T concepts. Um, there's some extra stuff in there, too, that maybe some people argue isn't wing T. Uh, that's fine, too. Again, um, this is my system that I, I got comfortable with when I was at Highland High School. Here in Indiana, um, I'd love to be a spread guy, but in Northwest Indiana, you're not going to throw the ball uh, in weeks you know, seven through nine and then in the state tournament. So you've really got to be a smash mouth run team. And uh, we were wing T under center and then morphed it into wing T shotgun. And then I took it a step further, took all the numbers and everything out of it and went to the strong side, quick side, and just the name is the blocking scheme. And then we, we call our backs you know, Q, F, H, Z, and that X and Y. So um, to get in, I'm not going to rehash all that stuff. But we're going we're gonna to start with, I'm going to draw up our tight end set first. So let's say we got our, our ball here. We got our strong guard, strong tackle. Let's say our Y and our Z are attached. We're in shotgun. My quarterback's weak, or my fullback is weak, I'm sorry. And that's, again, just a general rule. And, it, and it, again, here's the Twitter handle, at Pranks10. CoachBranks.com is the website. The videos that we've done so far are on there. And then if you want to hit me on email, it's coach.branks at gmail.com. So then I've got my quick guard, quick tackle, and then I've got an H out in the slot and an X on the line. Basic uh, strong right, which in this case, because we're attached, that's east. So this is east because I'm strong right. Again, like a compass, you know, I've got north, south, east and west. So this is east because I'm strong right. So let's go over what I can look at here. First play, let's look at strong side. This is typically how I install. I'm going to install to the strong side before I install to the weak side. So in this case I'll put the strong over here so that it makes more sense. And then we'll put the, the quick side or weak side here. Okay. So in this case, anything I call that's a strong side is going to go that way. So let's start with trap. If I call trap, you know, let's go over just a little bit. We'll go over a little bit of the blocking scheme real quick. If I call trap, trap's going to be strong side. So we're going to block, say, back. We're here. We're going to go to backers, and we're going to pull and kick out. And then we, he's going to go to a backer also. That's basic trap. I'm going to run it with the F. I can also run it with the Q, either way. Now, if I run it with the F, I can also bring the H in motion and make it look like buck, which you're going to see. So there, there's op opportunities here. Now, I can run this trap with my F in the plus position also. So by rule, he's on the weak side. I can run it here. And I, if I call trap, it's still going to be strong A gap, no matter what. So trap's going to be in strong A. So here's my A gap. Um, I can run it either way. Now, as a wrinkle, we'll get into when I run trap, uh, when we go up to play specifically and show clips. If my fullback is on the plus side, my Z, whether there's a tight end or not, again, I could be in jokers, which would have the Z here and the Y kicked out. It's my two by two formation. If my quarterback is going to see the, see the wing when he's handing off, he's going to go back to front hip ride the F, and he's going to read the Z 
replacing the backer, and that's an RPL. That's an automatic. So if the F is in plus, whether I run, you'll see there's a weak trap and a, and a normal trap. But if we just call trap, that's strong A gap. The Z is going to replace. If the F starts on the weak side, now the quarterback is going to ride him and read the end. And if the end crashes, the quarterback has the option to pull. So just something that you know we've incorporated the last couple of years. Um, when I was in East Chicago, we were able to do this. We were pretty successful. So let's start with trap. Let's take some of these lines off of here. So I can get into the blocking schemes. Bear with me. So we have trap. And the next thing I'm going to look for, one of my favorites, would be power. So power, it's going to be in B, C. Again, we're not, I don't have numbers for the holes. Instead, we're going to talk about rules and where, where things are created. So we're going to kick out the first man outside the strong tackle by rule because that makes the rule happen whether my Y is in or out. If my Y is out, it's still the first man outside the strong tackle. So that's who we're kicking out. We're going to double team any chance we get inside of that. As long as their inside gap is, in, is uh, empty, then they, they're going to come down. If the outside gap is, if their inside gap is empty, they can double. That's just a general rule. We'll get into more of that when I talk about power. But typical power, my quick guard is my puller in the hole. So if I run power, I've got to be in strong or in a plus because I need my F to kick out. I haven't got into one back power. I just kept things simple. If I run power, the F's kicking out. Uh, if we go with doubles, that meant the H would be here, and then the F can kick out, or I can do it in single back, and I would bring the H in motion. So I have H power, and I have Q power. Now, for some of you that run one back power, or comfortable with it, if, if your wing, if your sniffer's in here, and he's your kick out guy, then you can get away with running an F power. I just haven't done that. So I would run an H power or a Q power, and again, if I called Xerox, if I called H power ran Xerox, the X would be running my power. So my typical power is going to be, we're going to kick out the first guy. So if I've got an end here, we're going to block down, 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 and pull in the hole. And the F has the kick out. And the Z is going to go around it, maybe get that guy to widen out. So typical pure power, we're going to double any chance we get in here if, the inside, if your inside gap's open. Uh, the strong tackle or the strong guard may have the opportunity to double team. And Y is always blocking back to replace the quick guard pulling. So we have power. And again, we can play with this end because in power, we're going to kick him out with the F. Now let's bring the F back here. We have down. And I'm going to put down followed also. Again, that's going to hit in that C, B, C gap, probably C gap. Um, if I'm going to run down, I'm probably going to want my F over here, and we're going to reach for it. And then down, we've got down, down, pull, kick out there, and he's got the inside backer. So again, you know, we're, we're, we're on the front side playing with the end, but now we're kicking them out with a strong guard and blocking down with a strong tackle and the Y. And typically down is going to be for my fullback. So I, we had some success at Highland running it from here. But I, I like it here where he can ride him a little bit. What I like a lot more, and Clemson ran this with Deshaun Watson a few years ago, they basically ran down follow. And what it does, it, it, it lets you run like a Q ISO is what I would look at it as. Send your Z out and then have the F lead in this hole to get to this backer. And then your quarterback just follows it. And again, you can dress that up with some, some H motions. Um, you can even zip this to get some counter motion because he may not, he may be blocking probably a corner or outside backer. But down follow is another play that you know, I liked. Um, again, a lot of this depends on your personnel. When I was at Highland, I had a 300 pound tight end who was really, he was a great three technique. He was over 300 pounds, was just a heck of an athlete. So we ran a ton of east west with the Y attached. Then when I went, because he was just, he was basically an offensive lineman as a tight end who had great hands and had a couple touchdowns. Um, but then when I went to Calumet, my, my tight end just wasn't as strong, but I had a really strong Z 
who was only a sophomore at the time and actually just won the uh, two 220-pound state wrestling title here as a senior in Indiana. So he was a beast. So we kicked the Y out and put the Z in and run a lot of clowns and jokers two by two and able to run a lot of this. And he was a great blocker too and had good hands. Really somewhat of a running back. He was big. Um, and then at East Chicago, the last iteration, I just didn't have a Y, but I had a great kid at Z. So we ran a lot of uh, trips and, and uh, um, calls and jokers because I just didn't have the Y that could block. And he was also a linebacker playing both ways. I just liked him standing in a two-point stance instead of being in a, you know, his hand down in a three-point stance. And he caught them all really well on that trap, like I was saying. So I've got trap, power, down, down, follow would be the Q. Um, you know, the kids would just know if I call down, it's the F. If it's down, follow, it's the Q. Power would have to be, I'd have to let them know whether it's the Q or the H, or if there's a Xerox call, it's the X. Trap could be a fullback or a Q trap, so it's F trap, Q trap. Again, no numbers, no numbers for the holes. We're going to teach concepts. Um, then I've got buck, which is your typical, typical buck sweep. We called it buck. Now that's going to hit depending on your person, you know, your personnel at C or D. Rule is we're going to block everybody down that's inside the Z. So if we've got a Z, a Y attached, it's a little wider hitting play than if uh, if we're in clowns and jokers two by two and the Y is not here. Now think about the Z's here, so it's going to hit a little tighter. So you do have to educate your kids on where those kickouts, kickouts are and stuff. But we're going to block the last man on the line of scrimmage that's inside the Z is who we want to kick out to block down. So even if he's head up and he wants to cross his face, the Z, it's his. Between the Y and the Z, they've got to take care of that. My strong tackle's blocking back because we're here for the kick out. We're going to go front to back here because when I'm in gun, I don't have the fullback to block backside A gap if I'm running it with the fullback. Now, that, that's something that's a teaching point for the kids. If you can control this guy by bringing the strong tackle down, you're not getting a lot of pressure through backside A gap, then your center can work front to back. Because remember, he's leaving and he's in the hole. Hopefully, we're going to move this guy in, and he's going to be in the hole as tight to those that down block as he can get when he wraps around for the backer. Um, again, he's got front side backer. And my quick tackle is just stepping and hinging and protecting. I've always used him to step and hinge and protect, pre, protect. Some people have base blocked with him, base it out here, and now when my quarterback hands it off around the halfback highway, my quarterback can read that backside, maybe read the three technique. So that's something that I just never got to. I think it's a nice wrinkle that a lot of guys have. I'd rather, if I'm running F, F buck, and again, I can run Q buck, F buck, H buck, or make a Xerox call and have my X run buck. Um, I'd rather hinge and protect, and if this guy decides he wants to go, my quarterback can pull it and go. Um, another base rule, if I run an F-buck, I am running an absolute bubble snag out here. So my quarterback can pull it. It's, it's an RPO built in. We don't call it RPO. We just call it play. If I want to run age bubble, we're going to block buck on the front of it. It's just something because linebackers are going to flow. We're going to block uh, block buck and throw the bubble and get this action with the F. So again, buck is the blocking concept. Whether there's a Y in or not, my Z is almost always going to be attached. I just don't like getting the Z out. Now, absolutely, we can run Eastern here and that would kick the Z out and run a lot of plays, but I'm probably not going to run buck without having a wing because I like that the wing's back a step so he can read this. Again, if this guy wants to play games and go outside, these two guys are still going inside and we're going to now kick out that end if they're playing a the game. So lots of options. So again, Buck, I got Q, F, H, or X. Anyone can run it. That's, again, the versatility of this. By personnel, by who's hot, by what defenses are showing you. Um, you can com control that front side with different blocking schemes all the time. So I'm going to redraw this real quick. In my center, strong guard, strong tackle, Y, Z, um, Q, F. Now, I can do some things, too, out of the buck that we started running a little bit more in East Chicago because of some 
personnel issues or running back issues. We went to doubles, which you remember, right? I can go east doubles, puts the F here, uh, H here, takes them out of the slot, your traditional two back. And now if we're going to run buck, we're gonna, everybody's doing the same thing except my F fake here so he can take A gap. So that way my center's got front side in case he, you know, the strong tackle needs help getting down to A gap. And then I can run it with the H. Um, this is important with our spacing and shotgun, not pistol, because I like my handoff speed in front of the quarterback so he can read, make throws if he needs to, pull the ball, etc. I just think it puts more pressure on this backside. And a lot of this stuff for me needs to look same as. So, you know, if I got a weak trap, I got F buck. They're the same thing. If I go doubles and I want to run a weak trap, I'm going to run it with the F and the H may be running his buck footwork. So uh, a lot of things need to look the same. And then finally, um, jet power read is another way to play with that end. So I got jet power read. Um, Big play by Tom McPherson in, in uh, Florida. That's where I got it from, watching one of his YouTubes. He's amazing. And again, now we're going to take the end and we're going to make him the read. So, you know, I can run this out of this if I want to. Um, I can run an F jet power read because he's going to cross. The quarterback's going to read it with him. Everybody in here is blocking power, so I might have a double team, block back, block back. He's in the hole. We're leaving him alone. Z's getting outside. So I could typically, I could run this this way. My preference has always been to run it as an H with the H for power read because I'm going to run also, I'm going to run jets, which are in the alley and they're wide. So I'm going to usually bring him in motion, get him on the halfback highway at five yards. If I run jet, he's outside. So I wanted my jet power read to look the same. So my H has outside, my quarterback, if he pulls it, is running in there. So jet, jet power read look the same. This can look like buck, you know, because it's the same thing. If I run H buck, I can send my F in, or you, know, you can make a call during a game. If you think this is creating flow, there's nothing wrong with that. Now buck, I'd be blocking down and with kickouts. If I can't control the front side, I like power and jet power read a lot more. That's just something that you develop over time. So out of these, when I was at Highland, we ran a lot of buck, ran a ton of trap. We got really good at jet power read. I enjoyed that because I had a quarterback that was just a great running back. Um, when I was at Calumet, we ran less uh, H buck. We ran a lot of F buck because I had two really good Fs. My H just wasn't a, a game breaker, didn't have a lot of speed. So he was more of a decoy. He'd run power once in a while. He'd run buck once in a while. Um, but for the most part, when I was at Calumet, we ran a ton of, not as much jet power read because my quarterback wasn't as good of a runner. We did run some jet. We ran a lot of power, um, depending on personnel. We really liked trap. My Fs were my workhorse. We ran a lot of trap. We ran a lot of F buck. And then we ran Q powers and stuff. So, you know, we were able to get it done. Um, and then at East Chicago, probably had more athletes, but we were banged up and, uh, you know, some of the kids just weren't always there to learn a lot of intricacies. I had a nice line, really young, all sophomores and juniors, but my running backs just never quite figured the system out. Early in the year, we were really good at power, really good at trap. Buck was pretty good. Jeff Paul Reed was tough because my senior quarterback got hurt in week two. Tweaked a knee, and by week five, he was out. And so I had a sophomore quarterback who really wasn't a runner. So that kind of took Jet Power Reed out. Not as many quarterback runs when I was in East Chicago. So that's the basics. If you're, if you're a decent ISO team, you could have blast. I just never really got to it. We ran a little bit at Highland High School. That's going to be B gap. Because you really don't have a great B gap player unless you pull the Y out and you try to run your power and condense it all the way down to B-gap. Um, but if I run blast, that's basically a B-gap ISO for the quarterback. So it's pretty simple. You're just going to, you know, it's ISO for everybody with an F lead. So if I run blast, I want to do something, you know, in here. If I got numbers, and then my quarterback's just going to take it and follow. So that's a blast. Um, 
you know, you could have dive and stuff like that, but everybody's got that. So we don't need to get into that here. So that's my strong side. That's really, you know, I'm always going to look for trap. I love trap. I think it's, it's still a quick hitting play. Um, you know, we timed it a lot. We wanted to see what it was doing time-wise. And it still hits pretty hard. It hits pretty fast. As long as your quarterback takes a step with your F, he can still get it pretty quick. And, and honestly, sometimes the hole's open later than others. Sometimes they open quick. So it depends on personnel. But that's basically my strong side. So if I call buck, we're going strong. If I call trap, we're going strong. Now let's flip it. Let's look at our weak side, our quick side. Now I have weak trap which became a nice play because I like the angle of weak trap. When we went plus and put the F over here, my quarterback was able to run that trap RPO with the Z because he was facing them and riding them here for this trap. So weak trap, we're down, down, kick out, we're in A gap again. So I can run an F weak trap or a Q weak trap. And you can really get creative with this. Maybe on the wrist cards have weak trap and then have some keywords whether it's the F or the Q, I tend to just put it on the card, F weak trap, that way everybody sees it. So the beauty of the system, again, if you saw it in the first couple episodes, was this is still east. We can run to both sides and we're gonna get into it, but the blocking scheme for these guys up front, it is what it is. If I call like, you know, you just heard it, power's power, buck's buck, jet power, read, jet, they don't care who's running the ball and they shouldn't care. Now, the only thing that might change is if we're running buck out of doubles and I have the F block in the backside A gap, the center should be more committed to going to strong side A gap. But we'll talk about that when we get into more video. The other play that can go weak is going to be weak buck. Again, I didn't run this much at uh, East Chicago, but I was able to run a lot of weak buck at Calumet and at Highland. Uh, those kids really bought into buck and... Um, we're able to make the flip. If your team really doesn't understand buck to the strong side, it gets a little tougher on the weak side. But you do have a shorter edge. And what you need to do when you're on the weak buck is that H either needs to be more attached or you start putting him in motion and then he's your down block. But a weak buck does take an extra blocker. So you could have F weak buck. He's down to A. Let me redraw this real quick. You know, he's got to go down to A gap because we've got a quick kick here. Uh, he's got front to back, and then he's wrapping in the hole. And then now your strong tackle is your hinge and protect guy. And again, I can run several different weak bucks. I can have the F here, and he blocks backside A and bring the Z with a zip motion and let him run it. I can run a Q weak buck, let the F cross his face here. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things I can do. Now, keep in mind, if the Z is going to run it, I've got to get my H close enough that he can make this down block. Which, you know, if, if you've set it up, you're not, I just never run a ton of it. We've run enough of it that that's not much of a tell. Um, and then again, you could absolutely run an F weak buck, you know, as a tendency breaker, go into plus, have the F to the strong side, and run an F weak buck here. Again, all the rules for everybody else is the same. You know, your quick guards kick out, strong guard in the hole now. They just flip their rolls, reverse their rolls. <clears throat> so those are the two that go opposite. Um, a play that I didn't run really well, I don't think, and that's on me, I don't think I taught it really well. When I was at Highland and the, at County Mount, we got a little better at it, was counter. Um, and again, I like running counter from a plus position, so this would be east plus. And I consider counter to really be weak side power. It's the same concept to me. I'm going to try to run that in A, B gap. And that's what changed. At East Chicago, we became a really good counter team on the weak side. I wasn't as good at teaching it uh, in my first stints at Highland and at Calumet. And I'll tell you why. The Cool Clinic, which is absolutely incredible, um, Tennessee did a presentation a couple years ago on how they run counter. And, and they want to actually, if the ball's on that hash, they want to be able to double team and move this to that hash. That's how far they want to condense that edge. And when I taught it that way at East Chicago, it really was a game changer for us. So a lot of ways I can run it again. So my counter, again, my rules are always going to be strong guards kicking, 
and the Z's wrapping. Z's in the hole. That's my counter. So what you got to keep in mind, if the Y is in, if I'm in east or west, my Z's got one more hole before it can get there, so it's a little more developing. If I kick the Z out, or kick the Y out, and I'm in my Clowns and Jokers, which we were at East Chicago quite a bit, it becomes an easier play to run because he's a little bit closer. So he's kind of wasted in this play. So he's going to be my decoy because I like running Power and Buck and Jeff Ari. I can bring him in motion and sell it with that, go counter step here and bring the F back. I can send the F wide, let the quarterback, if it's Q counter, let the quarterback come back. So I'm going to have a Q counter and I'm going to have an F counter. That's just the way that's going to work. Um, if I that run a Q counter, let's say we got the Z here. He's the wrap. If I want to run Q counter from here, then you know we, we would bubble him, let him ride the F for one, two, so he can get in position behind the Z, and then the quarterback's here. So that could be my Q buck from you know just normal uh, jokers. This would be jokers because the Y's out. It's two by two. But I'm always going to use my strong guard and my Z. My tendency is always to have really large, strong tackles so they can anchor that strong side. Not as good when it came to pulling. So I really like my strong guard being the puller. So that was counter. Now, right on top of that, let's talk about crisscross. You know, I could easily run crisscross, which is a wing T play. So let's say crisscross. Because of the C's, that's counter. That's how I would teach the kids. Crisscross is a counter. Now, the only thing that changes is now the Z is going to be the ball carrier. So I'm really only going to call it crisscross if I'm getting a lot of flow because I'm going to hand it off to the F. Quarterback's going to reverse out like he does on Buck. And then there's going to be a double handoff here to my Z, and then my Z's up in the hole with the ball. So I've got to make sure I can account for that linebacker. Um, and if he's a kid that's flowing a ton, and maybe you've run buck a bunch, this is a nice play. Keep in mind they're always reading your guard. So um, that's a nice play. Oh, one play I didn't cover on the front side was gut. Let's let's go back to that. So when I run strong side, let me just rewrite, rewrite these. When I go strong side, a play that we had some success, honestly, against the really good teams is when a lot of this stuff works. Our gut, and I'll put it down here, was similar to trap. It's going to hit an A gap. So my gut is going to be Q, F. I really like running it with my Q, but I could run it with the F. Is we're going to, we're going to down block. We're going to pull. That's a fake pull. We're going to block back. Actually, I'm sorry. He's going to go to backer, and then our Q guard, quick guard, is going to pull and go in the hole. So it changes a little bit. We're going to step and hinge here. So we could run this and let go Q gut. We could put the H in motion and run a Q gut. You'll run that across. If we had the F in plus, you know, he's leading. This looks like buck sweep to everybody, and we're going to, we're going to ride that for a second, and we got Q gut. So gut to us was just an A gap. Uh, with a blind pull, fake pull by the uh, strong guard. So if a team's really looking at our, our uh, buck, gut's a nice play for us because we're going to try to get back up in that A gap. The quick guard's going to wrap. So that's gut. Uh, really good. We, I think we scored a touchdown on Q gut against a team that was ranked uh, one or two when we played them a few years ago when I was at Highland. We scored from about the 11 yard line. Maybe I have the clip of it. Um, and can put it on this film. But I don't want to get this, this video too long either. So we can talk about that when we talk about specific plays. So again, these are all out of one formation. So anyone that says you, by flipping your line, now if I was west, all this still goes, in, goes into effect. If I flip this whole thing and I flip my line and I'm in west, my strong side would then be my left side and my quick side would be my right side. So you know, if you think there's tendencies, we'll get into more here too. So I've got weak trap, counter, I've got crisscross, which is the double handoff, which, you know, we have crisscross pass also. Uh, weak buck, 
And then, you know, belly is really a big play, and it's a wing T staple. That's going to be B gap also. So belly, you know, these two guys are going to specialize in how they're going to block belly. Um, belly basically is going to be down block, kick, and we're going to bring out of my base east formation, my F's, my lead, and my quarterback's going to run it. So this is another play that's nice to either run belly, bubbles it with the H's, or put the H in motion. You know, if it's hip, he's in front. If it's home, he might be in back. That's, that's something we haven't talked about a lot. I got hip and I got home. But maybe I put the H in motion. Looks like power. Looks like Jeff Reed. Looks like buck. Um, looks like could be trap. But then my quarterback's going to keep it and go uh, weak B gap. So love that play. It's, 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 you know, again, I ran a ton of that at Highland because I had the quarterback. It was a nice play at Cali Max. We had the quarterback. And then when I went to East Chicago, because of injury, I really didn't have a quarterback to run that. So couldn't run it uh, as much as I would have liked. Um, belly option. So let's add belly option to this. Sorry about the writing. Uh, we had a lot of success with this when I was in Highland. Um, didn't really get to it when I was in East Chicago because of injury and, and because of my running back. So um, typical belly option if you're running this under center and you're a traditionalist, you're going to bring this wing back behind it. You're going to fake belly, bring the wing back. I'm just never a fan of bringing an extra guy to the party unless it's going to create um, something extra for me. And by bringing him here and leaving all this alone, I just never felt like it gave me an advantage when I did run it. It felt like I was at a disadvantage because now I'm rolling, rolling safeties and everybody, and my linebacker's moving over and made it harder. So the F has this backer, that inside backer on belly. All that happens on, on belly option is he's going to arc around this to get to him. He's still got him. These guys are going to do the same thing, except they're going to try to log this end. Okay? That's all there is. And then what we're going to do is pick on this backer in space, whoever the H's guy is. He's got to be close enough to be able to get in pitch relationship. Because when this play starts, my quarterback's going to attack. He may have to back up a couple steps to be in pitch relationship with my Q. There's a good article I wrote on that that's on the website. A lot more details if you're, if you're curious about that. But that's a way to really get to that weak side edge. Um, and and it's, it's a good play for us. Again, we ran that against number one team in the state a couple times. Uh, I remember a big fourth down. We got some good, good action against Lowell on that. So um, it's kind of a tendency breaker a little bit. And you can get this guy in space. Worked really good against a 5-2 team because... They took the stand-up defensive end and apexed him out, and that was the kid we were picking on on the uh, belly option. So it's a nice option play going to the weak side. Really, the option play we have going the other way, the strong side, is our uh, Jeff Power Reed, you know, where we put teams into an assignment football situation. So belly, belly option. Um, let's talk about zipper. Zipper became a really – I'm going to put it up here just because we're running out of room. Zipper is the Matt Canada play. It's the, the shovel. So, again, out of this base formation, I really like zipper, and I like it in 2x2 two because two, sometimes in 2x2 two two, you get a too high safety look, um, even though we probably saw cover three more than anything in my career. Um, we're not going to block the end. The end is going to be our read key on this one. So when we run zipper, it's going to look like counter. So that's, this is the way we teach it to the kids. Zippers counter. It's got the ER like counter, except we're going in the hole. The I and zipper is really, we're going to block this the same way we block counter, except this strong guard is in the hole. He's going to wrap. And then the, this is going to be my lead. Okay, actually, not my lead. He's going to be in pitch relationship with my quarterback. The Z is going to be inside. And he, my quarterback's going to read this end. The end comes up field. We got the shovel pass. The end stays in. My quarterback and my F are running option. And so I could have that one. And then I'm going to send my H probably inside. I'm going to send my X inside uh, just to keep guys busy over there, linebackers and things. So that's zipper. 
it's, it involves the Z. We're in the hole for the strong guard. Instead of counter, the strong guard's out. He's the kick out. So we called it zipper. And the kids really love this play and got into it. Uh, it was a really successful play. Another way to run this, you know, I like stacking these guys. So we'd run a stack out wide. And then what I would do is we'd fox motion it. So there's no motion here, so there's no tell. We would fox motion F outside. We'd fox him, and my quarterback's read was if nobody went with him, throw it to him. And then he's got two blockers out in front, and we would make that throw. If they do go with them, well, it just opens this up for here. We're going to read the end, and we got pitch or keep. So zipper was a nice play. I think Matt Canada at Pittsburgh, uh, a lot of film on that. So that was our zipper play. That's another way to get to the edge. Um, trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think I am. Again, if this is all the kids need to know, oh, we have weak jet too, which is kind of self-explanatory. We could have a weak jet. So again, we're hitting every gap with a play scheme, all down block kickouts. Um, one of the things that was really interesting at East Chicago made our jet a little bit better. We blocked jet like jet power read. So we had the down blocks, which would hold the linebackers. Um, so our jet power read blocking when we called jet. And if we called jet, that just meant I wanted to hand it off so I could run a, you know, an H jet. I could run a Q jet. Uh, you can run an F-Jet if you really want to. You still have a lead blocker. Again, you got to know your blocking situations and know what you can get away with, especially when it comes to trips and stuff. Um, you know, because, again, we can motion. We can call this trips. We can go east trips, have the Y attached. We can be in uh, Joker's trips. That will move the Z over here, keep the strong side to the right, and have a lot of this run game still left, the traps and uh, – you know, some things. So definitely the weak side stuff would still, still be available. So again, uh, that's the base. I've had some people ask me what are the plays. I've sent you guys some texts and tweets um, giving you the basics. But that's kind of a rundown of the run game. We can hit anything. We, we haven't got into, you know, power pass, which looks like power, but we send the Y and the Z out in routes. Down pass looks like down, send the Y and the Z out in routes. Um, we didn't get into waggle, which looks like buck, looks like trap. Um, jet power read pass was always nice because we'd send the H across in motion. You know, one, two, take a step back, and we, we'd tag the X on a, a, some kind of route, usually a post or slant, something deep. Um, and then all of this stuff just facilitates a, a heavy smash mouth run game that you're going to get some decent looks in the passing game for things like Chip Kelly Saints, which I love. Um, you know, all slants we called Mississippi, all curls was in mean, California. Um, so you can mix in some, even if you're an air raid guy, mix in some air raid concepts uh, to go with some of this. But I really like the power run game. Um, and, I, and, you know, as I said, my quarterback can run almost all of this stuff. And we had bells and whistles with motion. So just to go back to the methodology, I'm going to put a formation out. And I think I talked about this before. What if this is the right hash? And I've run power because, you know, if I'm not a flip guy, I've run power to the right so I get a great matchup, and now I'm buried into the boundary all the time. All I have to do in my situation is call west, flips my strong tackle to the field in that case, and I can run power to the field, jet power read, and everything else. Um, the flexibility, versatility, like I said, it's, it's, it's simple multiplicity because these play calls explain the blocking scheme to these five, or six or seven guys, um, that never changes no matter who's running the ball. So, you know, think about the quarterback as a running back. Because I'm in shotgun and not, you know, pistol, I, I know there's a lot of guys that like pistol, and it's got things because you can run people behind him and you still get some of the deception of wing T. I just feel in my case, wing T is just a great system. You saw we've got three ways to block the end and then not block them if we run the jet power read on the strong side. Um, my idea of wing T and everything I've read in, in the wing T Bible and the books and stuff is that you're creating, putting defense in conflict and having a system to counter things that they're doing to you. And you can see this does it. I can hit anywhere on the field. I only showed you one formation. Um, when you get into the trips and things, it, it's simple multiplicity because I can run motions like even zipper here. We can change that up. 
You can even send him the other way if you wanted to. Um, we can get the X involved. Without having a whole other play call, I can add the X. We also were able to add some keywords. You know, be creative. You can use animal names. You can use first names. You know, if we wanted to run a buck pass, you know, we call Peter Peter. Now, Paul might not be the buck pass. So if you're listening, you know, to what we were calling, the P didn't necessarily mean it, and that's something you're not going to run five times a game. So when you would run Peter, I believe, when I was at Cali Mount, we ran it to beat a, a team that was ranked. We ran buck all day, and then early in the, in the fourth quarter, we ran a buck pass. So we just called H buck on the card. Again, they've got the cards that are on the field already. We ran it to the right, so it was east. We, so we had them in east. Everybody looks and sees H buck. Now we said Peter, Peter. That meant pass. In that case, we had put the X over. So we were in east X, which put the X on the strong side. We ran H buck, Peter, Peter, and then we threw it. You know, we stock blocked and went with the X. He got behind the defense for a touchdown. Um, another thing we like to do if we, let's say we're in East X here, you know, you could run a, you have the H here, you could run an F buck, everybody's blocking buck, and then we might call Roger, Roger, and Roger was reverse. So we'd run an F buck, bring the X behind him, have a pitch, and we'd run F buck on the card, Roger, Roger told him it was, it was reverse. So, and he had the freedom if we had him in over there to decoy that uh, when I was at Calumet also. So did a lot of stuff. We like stacking guys, putting people different looks. But basically, here's the plays. You're going to see on the wrist cards, you know, F buck, H buck, Q buck. Now, again, I mentioned it earlier. Some of the tricks that we did, if we had said Xerox, I didn't have to add a whole other card. I only had 33 plays on the wrist coach, um, which included all of our passing games. Uh, as a coach, it's really easy to find stuff under this system, especially with the flipping, because I only have to have H power on my card. I don't have to have H power left, H power right. No Larry, Roger, Louis, and all L's and R's. It's literally just H power on the wrist coach. They see it, they know it's going strong side. So depending on which way we're flipped. So that's about it. If you have any questions about this, and I don't think I missed anything over here. If I am, I'll add to it or I'll put it in the notes below. Uh, but I appreciate you sending emails and all the correspondence. It's been amazing uh, seeing you guys through direct message on Twitter and uh, on the emails. It's been awesome. So if you have any questions, coach.branks at Gmail. This will be posted at coachbranks.com and also on the YouTube channel. Um, again, the last thing I have, if you've got a, a closet full, not even full, if you've got 10 t-shirts, 10 sweatshirts from a camp five years ago, that you're not going to use with your program, shoot me a text, shoot me an email, and, uh, and I'll make a way for you to get it to me. I'll even pay for the shipping to me so I can redistribute it to some kids that, that don't have uh, you know, some clothing and stuff. I worked at two, two city schools, and there were a lot of kids that could use clothes, um, and it would be great to help each other out. I mean, that's what sports is all about. So, anyways, strong, quick. If you have any questions on any of this, let me know. I'm going to try to start getting into uh, some of the details of some of the plays. But you can look up Buck Sweep and find all kinds of people talking about it. You can look up Power and find all kinds of ways to run it. Like I said, this is what worked for me. It was simple. It allowed me to hit anywhere on the field with most of my players. Any running back and allowed me to create bells and whistles with motions and everything else and take tendencies. Again, I don't have to be smarter than the other coach all the time. I have to be smarter than the 16, 17, and 18 year old kids on the other side that are watching motions and ball and uh, just got beat three times on power and now we run jet power read. Um, there, there's just tendencies that kids see, no matter what the coaches say, they're still gonna follow ball and follow motion. And by being in the gun, with a lot of this stuff looking the same, we've created deception, put defenders in conflict, and really that's what wing T is all about. So gun T, um, I, I call it smash mouth spread in one of my, my writings and it kind of stuck and, and guys loved it. So if you have any questions, let me know and uh, I'll talk to you later. Again, coachbranks.com. Have a great day.